Oh, welcome back, Planet Zoo adventurers, to another episode of Planet Zoo here on UK Theme Parks. And yes, we have some work to do in this episode. So, a quick catch up for previous episodes. If you haven't seen them, we haven't built our new Asian uh, Indian area. That has gone down really, really well. We do have a bit of a gridlock down here. It's not people looking at those screens. The entrance area has definitely become a little bit dated. It's become um, really, really difficult for people to get in and out with the kind of the pathing system that we've had to put into ease congestion. So first things first, we are gonna redo this entrance area quick, get a new path in, make sure we're happy with it, and then we are going to move on to the African area and do our first part of refurbishment in the African area, which is gonna be the lines. That's all gonna be done in this episode. But first, this congested area here is an area we need to look at rather desperately. Now we've moved the shops down first. In moving the shops down, we've done that so that we can um, we can get the people out of the entrance area. That's the plan. Now we are going to have to delete the people. Uh, I still don't like the path system. I still don't like the way it does or connects. I hate it. I hate the way the path system works in this game. I really, really do. But we'll get this connected and we'll spread out to, we need to somehow get a big entrance out of this. There we go. We'll get a big entrance in. Um, once we've got that in, we're going to build a slightly new entrance plaza. Um, it is something we're going to look at in a much, much uh, later episode. It's coming back and we are going to leave quite a lot of space around the entrance area. Um, this saltwater crocodile area will be gone and we will look to rehouse the facilities on the left hand side, which you see now. So that is a future, future one. But for now, we're just going to extend this area here. We'll get these people in first because there's a lot of people that we delete off the paths and they will hopefully flock in either direction. Let me check on our animals, actually. There we go. It's the only problem again when you unpause the game, this happens. Now then, we are going to extend very much what's already there, the theme that's already there with the glass and the wood. We're just going to get that in and kind of go along with what we already have. The reason for this is it's quite a modern entrance and we are going to use the Planet Coaster theme at some point because I really, really, really do like the pieces of it. I think they're brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So it is something we are going to use at some point. So for now, we're just going to extend this. We're going to take it past the facilities and make it so you come out a little bit further in the park. Then obviously in doing that, we can also put some facilities inside uh, with shops and things and have a nice little picnic area. So, uh, you know, it's not quite so congested when you come in. That said, this is quite a basic entrance area to the zoo. So this will be sort of a hub, I think, eventually, before you really, really enter the zoo, this will be the hub. Um, you'll walk through this and then at the end here where we put these curves, we are gonna have a brand new uh, kind of mass entrance area with big sign, welcome to the park. Uh, the park at the moment is called Wildlife, so we don't actually have a proper name for the park. Suggestions below in the comments, what should we name the park? Hmm. It's gonna be a long-term name for it and it's something we do wanna stick with. Ooh, something good as well. So throw your names out by all means, we wanna hear your names. Now we're gonna have this park glass and park wood, which uh, is actually quite different. You don't see that very often, particularly on a roof basis. Um, and then connect it at the front and then it allows a little bit of natural lighting. As it stands at the moment, actually talking about lights, we haven't gone around and added any lights in. This is very much a daytime park. We want to get it up and running. Once we've got it up and running, we will go around and do the lights. We have heard and read a few things online that the lights don't work as effectively as what they do in Planet Coaster and you do need more. But of course, I don't really know any zoos that are open at night, to be honest with you. With theme parks, Yep, there's quite a few, but with zoos, I don't really notice any that are open at night. So we'll get in here themed a bit. We'll get some signs on as well, uh, you know, because this is an area that we want to, we kind of want to keep as it is. This will be an entrance sort of hub area, as we said, and then have the main entrance uh, when you come out to kind of welcome you into the zoo. We're not going to have any animals in here or anything. Um, we're just literally going to have some food outlets and we'll have some, uh, you know, souvenir take home parts. Make sure it's accessible, make sure it's nice and wide and that people can get in. And of course, theme fairly nicely in here so we don't have to come back and touch inside of here once it's done. Now then, once a few plants are in, we will finish with this section and head over to the Africa section. Of course, you see the lion there and the lines is going to be what we're going to look at. Now we've seen some amazing lion enclosures. And we definitely rushed it. I think it's fair to say, you know, when we, we did the area, we definitely, definitely rushed it. So we don't want to do that this time. We want to have a much bigger enclosure for the lions and we want to have a much uh, better 
kind of atmosphere around this area for them as well and you know again get guests as interactive as we can now we could lower the tiger cage which we probably will do slightly but i think ultimately you know where we've gone for more modern enclosures look over we are still going to have to have um you know viewing areas and windows for the lions now to do the lions we have got to uh, remove the zebras and the giraffes. Now we don't really want to sell any. Um, some of them are old age, particularly the um, giraffes, they're not going to have that long left. So we are literally going to convert this cage down the back so people can come in, you know, people can still walk down here and view, they don't tend to walk down here and view, but so people could walk down here and see the zebras and the giraffes. Eventually they will move to their own cage and we will expand the group as well because the giraffes haven't been particularly happy with just two of them as we have sort of winded down their uh what's we winded down their reproduction we've winded down their breeding in order to make this move to make the uh, lions bigger first the lions breed a lot faster we've always got more than two lions kind of at the park so the lions is the priority but we are going to have to move these first we're going to move these out and move these across uh we'll quickly theme this area down here to make sure they're happy and then of course we'll be removing that cage and we will be uh, yeah, extending, extending. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do with the lions at the moment. I think the lions we'll probably have to put into storage. We'll probably have to send them back to the trade center while we uh, develop that area. But again, ultimately, once we know these guys are happy, we can pause the game again and we can really, really change this. So the facility buildings down the side, we want to get them out of the way. We want to make sure that they're gone. Those ones you can see here on the left. And we're going to make a new path, a staff path right the way down the back which will ultimately link to the other area. This will all go, all the scenery here is gonna go. We're not gonna reuse any of the scenery whatsoever. Uh, we're not gonna use any of the buildings. Right, we need to change, <laughs> we just traded, just got rid of the, uh... yeah. So we've got a few potential inbred issues. We have to be very, very careful uh, with inbred issues. Although we're not in franchise mode and they're not gonna um, kind of have a problem with you know fertility going forward, it's not something we want in the zoo. It's not something we want to, uh, you know, we, we want to be encouraging or indeed doing. And it would be nice as well, I think eventually, is that we have some holding pens for some of the, you know, key breeders, the ones that we like to breed. And we do like to breed and, uh, you know, send back out to the wild and that we actually move them as they uh, reach adulthood so we don't get fighting, we don't get inbreeding. And then we have the option as well of keeping them uh, for when uh, the male or female dies and we can reproduce with a, a new uh, species or a new, sorry, a new breed that comes to the park. So it'll just give us a few options rather than just having one kind of cage for them all. But initially, one cage, they're fighting. We'll get rid of them. Uh, one cage is kind of where we want to be. We just want to make sure these cages look good, but at the moment they don't. So as you can see here, we're moving the buildings across the back. We're going to add a trade center as well. Once we've sorted out some more food for our pandas. Again, when we've got them running, um, you know, this becomes a problem. So we are going to pause it now and get all this done. So yeah, we know we've got to remove all of this, all of this area here. We're going to completely kind of go back on um, the elephants will be next to move when we do the african area they will uh, have their own uh, enclosure i'm not quite sure what we want to do it. i really wanted them over by the hippos but i've got so many hippos now that it's a real pain of what to do with them uh, of course the juvenile ones you can't get rid of and um, the juvenile ones you have to keep hold of uh, which is a real bit of a problem that you can't change them to another zoo uh, you know when you can trade the other ones and the parents might even die but you know is what it is uh, we're going to send the lions back to the trade center and we are going to redevelop this area ready for them to come straight back and of course we're not going to unpause either so um, you know it shouldn't cause too much of an issue we shouldn't have to unpause much they won't age too much in there
So there's a lot of stuff there. You can see we've done the outline of the enclosure. Uh, we've got kind of the, the look we want to it. It's gonna be a look down one. It seems to be going quite well. It's quite amazing how many broken bits we've got around actually. So we're gonna have to remove the broken bits around here. We're gonna realign the path. We've got rid of the viewing area. Um, this area kind of needs to be completely redone as we come in and ultimately, this area at the top of the screen now in the middle uh, with the underground bit and the water facility it's been causing a lot of problems will have to go so as you can see we will build the barrier around here not including the uh, the facilities which we've got because the facilities we got are going to be hidden away finally behind view and they've moved from the side uh, although we have kept the um, lion house there we probably won't keep the lion house now I think it's easier to go for electric fence I think it's much easier to go for electric fence than it is anything else and we'll have some glass along here so people can see and I, like, I love the curve at the top so we're going a little bit of curve at the top as well just to balance that nicely up and down that's what we like and then people will be able to look in over the electric fence at the area we're going to build a viewing platform as well looking over because at the end of the day it seems to be from the enclosures that we've done people looking over the, the uh, enclosure and into it definitely seems to generate more donations and definitely seems to generate more guest happiness so an absolute key point now again for the climbing frame we are going to use a pre-made climbing frame later down the line we are going to experiment and make a really big sort of ape enclosure it is something we want to do further down the line and that is definitely going to require a little bit of effort in terms of not just throwing these things in but at the moment i think for the um lines it will be absolutely perfect to do so now then we want to have the entrance at the top here so there's a nice slope but of course we want to enclose this building best we can and make sure that it all fits very very nicely and the building will come out here and form the hard shelter on the left hand side they'll have a little bit of shelter actually on the middle here where the gate comes in and we will make sure we put some hay in there as well for them now then we'll go to the ground it's much easier to start at the top and come to the ground than what it is to uh to to start at the bottom and necessarily make it at the right height so we're going to do that we'll get that in and make sure we get these the right way around so we get the tops on without any problems and again, this will form their hard shelter. And you know, since we've been re kind of doing the zoo and, and regenerating it and uh, refurbishing it, we haven't used any of the pre-made shelters. You know, I didn't realize at the start that you could build your own shelters. Um, you know, it, it's certainly in other games you play, sometimes the rain is just rain. It just rains everywhere. But the way it falls off, as we've said on there, on the buildings and things, definitely makes it a lot more uh, realistic in how you build and what you do and how you make buildings, shelter the animals. Uh, yeah, it's just worked really, really well. So we know we can do that now. We know we can put a roof on this and the animals will be dry. And obviously means that we can create our own enclosures and our own uh, shelter with the actual theme of the game, which in this case is the African theme, which is coming together quite nicely here. Uh, now then, the lions will hopefully be ready to move back in soon. Um, we'll probably need a new pair very shortly. I think they're getting of age. But we're going to make this look like a sort of a house area at the front here. You know, I love the roofs on this. You can really, really do a lot with the roofs if you wish to. Uh, we're going to keep these ones fairly simple, fairly flat. Uh, we have done some slightly more uh, complex ones around. But I think for this purpose, with people kind of looking over the enclosure rather than it being a building, I think it's absolutely perfect to, to keep it like this with just some doors and windows and a nice little roof on it. Again, you can see that the uh, habitat wall is gonna be completely enclosed in there as well. So that will uh, will keep out of sight. And yeah, you just won't be able to see any of it. It'll be really, really nice the way it sort of comes together and looks a lot better than what we had here before. Um, you know, it just seems to be, I think most people have picked up the game in honesty and they've just literally gone with the, um, you know, uh, we got want some glass walls and we, we want to make it at eye level and we've not really thought about sinking it and we've not really thought about, you know, how people could look over and how we could use other uh, bits of scenery as well in order to, to kind of block people in. So yeah, you know, I don't think anyone's really thought of that uh, initially when they pick up the uh, game and then maybe we've seen some videos and obviously these people that made the videos, I guess they have thought of it. But I think as a general rule, when I look across the forums and I look across everything else, you know, people have all started very much the same flat bit of land enclosure around uh, people looking in for a glass window. Whereas now you, it seems you can get really creative with this as the game's been out and you can see some of the creations that have been made and you can see what people have come up with. You can actually see that they've put some real thought into the design of this game in, in the fact that, you know, you can have ones that look down on them and the people will look down on them. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. It's amazing how they thought of it. So again, we are going to have a, if we can get it fit, still don't like the paths, going to have to be a fairly small one, I think. So we're going to have a little viewing area here, which will go over to the lions and people will be able to come up here and have a look and we'll put a couple of uh, 
uh, canopies in here as well. I'm trying to align them a little bit better. There we go. There we go. I have to move that over. Slight overlap, but of course these do also uh, provide some shelter, which is really important. Uh, oh, the lines haven't arrived yet, so they look like uh, elephant screens. <laughs> ah, that's brilliant. Um, we've still got some uh, other bits going on. See, as we unpause, we can see that we've got some fighting going on there between the males, um, and we need the. Oh, okay, there goes another one. I think that's our first one. It's our first Bengal tiger that's died. Um, it has old age, but it's decided to die in the. Uh, in the water fountain which is lovely absolutely lovely so what we need to do there we needed to unpause to get the lions in to make sure we get their habitat absolutely right and we get the right trees and things in there because although their biome does say they can have sort of grassland wetland stuff they can't have everything that's in there and again you know we said we've seen a lot of uh, you know examples online where people have made it look really pretty we've never seen kind of the backdrop of it but we know that the, uh, the, you know these things can't happen so we do want to get it 100% right first time make sure they're happy make sure they're all in there and yeah that's the Nile monitor that's died uh, he's died in the water while swimming which isn't good uh, now the Nile monitors actually we are going to kind of wind down uh, as they hit old age we are going to kind of uh, not replace them uh, that area over there is going to be redeveloped next and that will see uh, you know the um, the, the two other crocodiles be relocated into the Asia area, which is kind of their their origin area, where the Nile crocodile would need to, or the Nile monitor would need to come over to the African section, which, as you can see, we're certainly not ready for yet. That said, we are not far away. We are not far away. Uh, yeah, so here's the lion enclosure. We've got these bits in here. I always forget with the staff rooms to uh, make sure that we can, um, we, we put some kind of facility in there. Make sure he's happy. There he goes, yeah. In goes the uh, caretaker. Um, we've got a lot of poo there, and that's because we've forgotten to connect the path. So we need to go back and connect the path very, very shortly. But yeah, you know, this is the new line area. It's all open. It's looking rather nice. We can tidy up around here. So happy with the way that has gone. We're coming back over to the Asia area to restart this bit here, which is the crocodiles. And the reason for doing this now, rather than continuing with the Africa area, is the fact that they are right by the entrance and really kind of in the way. So this is the groundwork you're gonna see at the end of this episode, uh, which is gonna dive down into an underground tunnel area. And of course, these are gonna have uh, water viewing areas and probably not so much from the top, but maybe a little bit from the top, but particularly an underwater viewing area. And we're not going to have two pools like we have on the last one. We're going to have one pool because uh, yeah, a lot of people complain they can't see them on the other one because they're always in a different water. Make the gradients right and we're going to have both of them in this space. They're both going to come over. Now then, we are approaching the end of this episode and we've achieved, we're achieving quite a lot in regenerating this zoo. And as you can see, when you pause the game, you know, even if you're in franchise mode, you can regenerate the zoo without causing a lot of disruption. You really can. If you end up moving guests and things, they end up going back to the entrance. It's really not a problem. And that we have made a massive stride with the Africa bit, just changing a couple of bits. We've had to move a few animals out, which we will move back in as we kind of look to uh, finish off that area once we have moved these crocodiles. The idea is we'll move these crocodiles out the way and then open up the area at the beginning, open up the space. I do love these random patterns you can do because, you know, you could just duplicate them. They're very weird. I get they're very weird. They don't necessarily make any sense, but I just love a good random pattern on the side of a building. So that's what we're going for with a few trees and a bit of ivy. But yeah, let us know below. What did you think of our new line enclosure looking down? A uh, nice viewpoint. And of course, they've got a much, much larger space. And that's not only a larger space, but a larger space as well with some rock and some other climbing materials. Leave your comments below what you're expecting from the next episode. We will be back very, very soon as we continue to actually actually make a zoo out of this game in Planet Zoo, which is something we hadn't done initially, but it is definitely something we're going on with. And the next episode definitely focuses on moving these crocodiles. See you next time.